this is Joy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a project for Maker Forte and I'm doing a little bit of Copic coloring with a stenciled underlay and I'm using my favorite inks in the colors Blue Moon, Bubblegum, and Lemon and I'm starting out my project by bringing in the Circle Spotlight stencil and I did uh, use some pixie spray and use some magnets to hold this down. That's probably an overkill, but I wanted to make sure not to get any shifting. So I start off by blending the Lemon Color Hive ink down through the circle. And I make sure to get a nice even blend. So I take my time with this and make sure that I put down, you know, ample amount of ink. Um, one thing to remember is that this is a dye ink, which means that they are translucent, and as they dry, they will dry, dry back smooth. Now I am bringing in the Hexagon Burst Stencil and the Bubblegum ink, and I am blending that through the top half of the circle. Now I will tell you that this was a technique that a friend of mine asked for and she had presented me with a clean and simple card with some spotlight and a silhouette stamp. I chose to do Copic coloring so this is a little bit different but it's actually the same technique. Next I come in and use the Blue Moon Color Hive ink and I put that on the bottom half of the circle and then I remove both stencils and you'll see that I got a really nice blend. Using my Misty, I uh, lined up the Buttercup, the Chin Up Buttercup stamp and I inked that up with Eclipse Black ink. And then I did take a heat gun to that just because I had so many layers of ink. Typically you wouldn't have to because these inks are compatible with um, Copics, but I try to be overly cautious after I've gotten this far into a card. So I start out with my Copic markers in the color R20. And I kind of am mapping out where I want my shadows. It's really important to know that Copic markers are translucent and so are the dye inks. So you're going to get the stenciling to shine through the flower whether you put the Copic marker in. Now I didn't aim for a seamless blend with my Copic coloring because I wanted the stenciling to shine through and to be the star of the show. Once I am finished with the R20, I come in with the R22 and that's where I'm putting in the saturated shadow. And you're gonna see that that color starts to pop, that R20, almost is the same color as that bubble gum. So you didn't really notice that on the video. Like all of my flowers that you've seen me do on this channel, I go one petal at a time. I find that when you do flowers and you color them, if you do one petal, you don't get lost in the process and they don't, they don't seem as daunting. When you try to do all of the things at one time, you sometimes can become overwhelmed depending on how big your bouquet is. So you're going to see that once I am finished with the R22, then I blend that out with the R21. And with this R21, I am just extending the shadows and I'm putting a little bit of detail um, lines into the top part of the petals. But for the most part, I'm not going in with a full color because the whole point of this technique was to allow the stenciling to shine through in all the different colors of inks that blend. Um, I did choose the pastel primary colors so that they would all play nice together. Um, and that's why I did the pink, the yellow, and the blue because then you get all the colors of the rainbow without creating mud. Now. For my foliage, I am using a BG72, and I map out where the shadows are going to be. I go along each rib of the, of the stems of the uh, flowers, or I'm sorry, of the petals. 
and I just take my time to make sure that I get a petal in. Now, the 7-2 is not um, a highly saturated color. So you're going to see that when I come in with the BG11, they almost have the same saturation level. So the 1-1 kind of washes it out. And I'm bringing this up because you're going to you're going to see that I have to go back in with the BG72. And because Copics are translucent, that means that you can layer them. So as you put colors on top of one another, not only do they blend, but they also become more saturated or more vibrant in the coloring. So this BG11 is technically the main color of my leaves and of the stem of the rose. But because I have the yellow ink and the blue ink under there, you're going to get different uh, tones in there, which I think is absolutely stunning. Next, I come in with um, the sub sentiment from the stamp set, and I die cut that into an oval. And then, using my crop a dial, I put in two holes to make it look like a tag. And then I um, bring in some sage colored uh, twine and fish that through. If you have stuck with me so far, I would truly appreciate you giving me a thumbs up, leaving me a comment, and even sub consider subscribing if you wouldn't mind. To um, Before I place the tag onto the card, I do glue the panels down and I use my ink swishing tool to actually get a nice layer of glue so that I don't get any type of, um, you know, warping of my card panel. And you're gonna see that I tack down these twine with some painter's tape and then I glued that down again with my uh, wet glue. Um, I think this turned out really nice. Then I came in with just some clear crystals uh, for an embellishment. Um, and here are some last shots of the card in close-ups. And again, uh, thank you for sticking it out with me and please consider subscribing. Until next time friends, keep crafting. Bye-bye.